Oh, I didn't do that. Boink. I want the layout. Oh, that was not right. Get my full screen. It's so weird. Oh, I can't. Oh. Can what? I can't unmirror it. It's okay. Can I? That's so weird. Someone's watching. I have no idea who's watching. Hi, Hi. whoever's watching. Does it say? Where? I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Nope, that wasn't it. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. Hi, Del. Thanks for popping in, everyone. We're a little bit early. So we'll get started around four o'clock, but thanks for jumping in early, everyone. Uh, how to? Oh. Hi, I see 11 people logging on now. Simply click on the live video you like to see metrics map and then you have to watch it like after <laughs> Ready? That didn't help. <laughs> Sorry Del, I don't know how to dance very well. And that, uh, there's not enough room in our video, so I'm just gonna have to do it this way. Oh, we can't see who it is. So we do see a whole bunch of people coming in to watch. Um, we're pretty new to this Facebook Live thing, so if you can say hi to, in the comments so we know who's here, and uh, we'd love to have a conversation. Happy Sunday, everybody. Can't see. It used to be there apparently, but it doesn't. <clears throat> How's everyone doing? Comment, comment. Everybody having a good Sunday so far? Still super sunny outside. Looks like the days are getting longer. It's like four o'clock and the sun is still up. Just a couple more minutes, we'll get started really soon. Hopefully this doesn't die. Okay, for those of us just tuning in, we're just going to get started in just a little bit. Just waiting for people to log on. Um, once you come on, please say hi on the comment page so we know you're here. And uh, we'd love to say hi.
<laughs> okay, so it's four o'clock. Um, so just wanted to do a couple introductions. So I'm Jan and this is my daughter. I'm Yasmin. Her name's Yasmin. Um, so I've been involved with Folklorama now for about four years before Yasmin was born. I think she's 14 now, I think. Uh, so that would make it about 18 years. Um, I started hanging out with my girlfriend at Folklorama, watching her shows and taking her to practice. And uh, then I, I kind of evolved uh, doing odd jobs like um, setting up props for the shows, uh, doing dishes and stuff in the kitchen, um, greeting everyone when they come in, so on and so forth. So uh, we, we absolutely miss Magdaragat and Folklorama. Um, we're super excited for whatever's happening this summer. And here's my little girl, Yasmin. Hi. So I'm Yasmin. I've been in Folklorama since I was really little. My mom used to dance with Magdaragat and my dad was there too. So I've been dancing as a prop and as a dancer. Since I was like a baby. It's been sure. fun. Oh, my pictures. Yeah, we got some pictures of her when she was a kid. Oh, wait, let's see if it'll show. Um, Here's me backstage. The picture is kind of blurry and you can't really see. Oh, shoot. Oh, here. This is me. Oh, you can see my window. <laughs> but look, my eyes aren't even like there. But anyway, that's when I was a dancer. But, um, oh, then there's me and my friends. Where's the one here? There's one where I'm on stage, actually. Oh, now it's super dark. Yeah, that, that little one sitting on the bench is me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, really small. So, yeah. So, yeah, so Folklorama has been a really, really big part of our lives. And, and like I said earlier, we just can't wait for what the future holds. We know Folklorama and, uh, and the whole organization has been a little bit different the last few years, as is everything. But, uh, but we are super excited about what the future is. Uh, so officially, welcome to Folk Tales with Folklorama. Hopefully you've enjoyed all of the stories that have uh, come before us. Uh, we've, we've tuned into most of them and, and uh, are super impressed with some of the stories that, that have come out. Um, Yasmin and I will be reading from this book, Philippine Folk Tales. Uh, there are a whole bunch of short stories, so we thought we would read a couple stories each. Um, and... And yeah, hopefully you enjoy them. I read through some of them the last little bit. Some of them are really gory and, and morbid. So we chose kind of <laughs> the better ones for for uh, everyone to listen into. Um, this book, I think we bought from the actual pavilion, the Pearl of the Orient Pavilion, one of the earlier ones that, that we had visited. So it's, it's kind of special to us. Um, so yeah, so people are still coming in, so we'll maybe start in about two minutes or so, or maybe a minute. Um, again, please say hi in the comments. We'd love to see who we'd love to see who's here, and and yeah, we'll get started in just a bit. So far, I see Dell commenting three times. Hello, Dell. Seem to be our <laughs> biggest fan. Has anybody joined any of the earlier readings? They've been really cool. This thing is so scratchy. Oh, should we put that back? <laughs> you didn't see that. And we see hi from Emma and Caleb. Hi, Caleb. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. What are you guys doing right now? see 12 other people we don't know who you are so <laughs> we love to hear from you in the comments oh there we go oh, hi, hi dad <laughs> dad's watching usually dad's with uh, all of his grandkids on sundays but but they're out and about today so he's all alone at home you know he's not home no <laughs> who else is here is watching. Okay, so I'm going to get started with the first story. So I'm going to read two and Yaz will read two. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Bear with me a sec. So page 21. 
So my first story is called The Lost Necklace. There aren't too many pictures in this book. So here's the one picture for my story. Um, yeah, so I'll start to read. So The Lost Necklace, uh, narrated by Facundo Esquivel. Um, and apparently he heard this story from a friend in Cebu. The story is Visayan. Uh, once a crow bought a fine necklace from a merchant. It was a very it was very proud of its purchase. The crow immediately put it around its neck so that everyone could see it. Then it flew away and came to a beautiful little garden. There it met its old friend, the hen strutting about with its chicks following it. The hen said the crow, the crow the hen, the hen said to the crow, Oh, what a fine necklace you have. May I borrow it? I will return it to you tomorrow without fail. The crow liked the hen, so it willingly lent, its hen, lent the hen its necklace for a day. The next morning, the crow returned for it. It found the hen and the chicks scratching the ground near the old wall. So where's my necklace, said the crow. It's lost, said the hen. My chicks took it yesterday while I was asleep. And now they don't remember where they put it. We have been looking for it all day, but we have not been able to find it. Well, you must pay for it, pay for it at once, said the crow, or else I shall go to the king and tell him that you stole my necklace. The hen was frightened at this reply. The hen began to wonder how it could raise the necessary money. The crow, who was on its way to a fiesta, at, at last said impatiently, I will take one of your chicks every day in payment of what you owe me. As soon as you find the necklace, you give it to me. Only then will I stop eating your chicks. The hen had to agree, the hen had to agree with this arrangement. It feared that the crow would go to the king if it refused. Up to this day, you can still find hens and chicks scratching at the ground together looking for the lost necklace. The crows are still getting their payment for the lost jewel by eating the chicks. It is said that the hens and chickens will never stop scratching the ground until they find the lost necklace. I'm kind of hoping that necklace is found soon. It's kind of gross. Kind of gross. Hi, Karen. Hi, girls. Thanks for tuning in. So that was our first story from the book. So Yaz is going to read two stories. Two in a row. Two in a row. Let's see my first story. It's 57. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so this one is really short. It's the story of how the moon and the stars came to be. There's also only one picture for this one. It'll make sense after I read it. It's, oh, it's kind of weird without the context. Yeah, anyway, so um, this is how the moon and the stars came to be. This story came from Mindanao. Yep, okay. Um, once upon a time, when the sky was close to the ground, a spinster went out to pound rice. Before she began, she took off her necklace from around her neck and the comb from her hair and hung them on the sky. At that time, it looked like coral rock. She just hung them on clouds. Yeah. Um, then she began pounding, and each time she raised her pestle, into the air it struck the sky. She pounded the rice for some time, and then she raised the pestle so high that it struck the sky very hard. Immediately, the sky began to rise, and it went up so far that she lost her ornaments. Never did they come down again, for the comb became the moon, and the beads of their necklace became the stars that are scattered about. That is how the stars got there. No gas or anything. Just necklaces. I'm not really sure what a pestle is, but pestle? maybe we can find that pestle? out later. Pestle? A pestle. A hammer. Yeah. I have no idea. Okay. So that one was really short. <laughs> the second one is a little bit longer, so this one will take more time. <laughs> okay, so this um, is the story of why dogs wag their tails. Yeah, this story is Visayan. Cool. Okay. A rich man in a certain town once owned a dog and a cat, both of which were very useful to him. The dog had served its master for many years. It had become so old that he had lost his teeth and was unable to fight anymore. 
but it was a good guide and companion to the cat who was strong and cunning. The master had a daughter who was attending school at a convent some distance from home, and very often he sent the dog and the cat to bring presents to the girl. One day he called the faithful animals and bade them carry a magic ring to his daughter. You are strong and brave, he said to the cat. You may carry the ring, but you must be careful not to drop it. And to the dog, he said, you must accompany the cat to guide her and keep her away from harm. They promised to do their best and started out. All went well until they came to a river. As there was neither bridge nor boat, there was no way to cross but to swim. Let me take the magic ring, said the dog, as they were about to plunge into the water. Oh, no, replied the cat. The master gave it to me to carry. But you cannot swim well, argued the dog. I am strong and can take good care of it. But the cat refused to give up the ring. Finally, the dog threatened to kill her, so she was forced to give it to him. But the cat refused to give up the ring. Finally, the dog threatened to... Oh, wait. <laughs> I read the ring. The... The river was right wide and the water was so swift that they grew very tired. Just before they reached the opposite bank, the dog dropped the ring. They searched carefully but could not find it anywhere. And after a while, they turned back to tell their master of the sad loss. The dog was so overcome with fear that he turned and ran away just before reaching the house. He was never seen again. The cat went on alone. When the master saw her coming, he called out to know why she had returned so soon. He also asked what had become of her companion. The poor cat was frightened, but she explained as well as she could how the ring had been lost and how the dog had run away. Upon hearing her story, the master became very angry. He commanded that all his people search for the dog, and that it should be punished by having its tail cut off. He also ordered that all the dogs in the world should join in the search. Since then, when one dog meets another, he says, Are you the old dog that lost the magic ring? If so, your tail must be cut off. Then, immediately after hearing this, each dog shows its teeth and wags its tail to prove that it is not the guilty one. Since then, too, cats have been afraid of water, and if they can avoid it, they will not swim across a river. All right. Gross. So before I read my last story, I just wanted to remind you guys that uh, Folk Tales with Folklorama continues next week with uh, Mimi Aiello. She's going to be reading Where is Winnipeg? I think we all want to know where Winnipeg is, right? Um, so she's going to be reading on February the 28th. So again, Mimi Aiello next week, February the 28th, she'll be reading Where is Winnipeg? Okay, so I'm going to be reading my last story of the day. It's called The President Who Had Horns. Let me find it here. It's kind of a freaky one. So this is an Ilocano story. Here's the picture. Again, it'll make a little bit more sense when I read. Looks like it's a barber who is uh, doing a little bit of a cut on the president who's got weird horns, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Great. So again, the story called is called The President with Horns. So once there was a president who was very unjust to his people. One day he became so angry that he wished he had horns so that he might frighten all of them. Right after he made this wish in haste, the horns began to grow on his head. He sent for a barber to come to his house and cut his hair. And as he worked, the president asked, What do you see in my head? I see nothing, answered the barber. Although he could obviously see the horns, he was afraid to say so. Then the president up his hands onto his head and felt the horns. Then when he asked again, the barber told him he had two horns. If you tell anyone what you have seen, you shall be hanged, said the president. The barber got really frightened and ran away. The barber finally got home. He did not intend to tell anyone, for he was afraid. But as he thought of the secret more and more, the desire to tell someone became so strong that he could not keep it in any more. Finally, he went to the field and dug a hole under, the, under some bamboo. When the hole was large enough, he crawled in and whispered that the president had horns. He then climbed out, filled up the hole, and went home. After that, a voice came from the trees and it said that the president had horns. In a little while, some people passed by the bamboo on their way to the market. They stopped in surprise because they had heard a voice coming from the trees, and it said the president had horns. 
These people hurried to the market and told everyone what, told everyone what they heard. The people there then went to the bamboo to listen to the strange voice. They, they informed the others, and soon the news had spread all over town. The councilmen were told, and they too went to the bamboo. When they had heard the voice, they ran, up, ran to the house of the president. But his wife had said that he was ill, and they could not see him. By the time the horns had grown almost a foot, the president was so ashamed that he asked his wife to tell the people he could not talk. She told this to the councilman when they came to the came on the following day, but they insisted that they may see him, for they had heard that he had horns, and if they, this was true, he had no right to govern the people. She refused to let them in, so they broke down the door. They saw the horns on the head of the president and unfortunately killed him. For them, he was no better than an animal. Again, that was the least of my morbid tales in this book, but, you know. <laughs> not so bad but thanks again for joining us today um hope you guys had uh enjoyed our stories Yasmin, remind them again oh don't <laughs> forget to tune in next week's episode where we will have mimi ayala reading where is winnipeg on february 28th all right thanks again for joining everyone hopefully everyone has a great rest of your sunday and uh we'll see you soon take care Bye. -bye.